So next, let's move to churn and retention cohorts. So this covers the business models that effectively have revenue. So in any business model, this works for. So again, we're going to talk about kind of a crude metric and then a more sophisticated metric, similar to the Dow Mao and the power user curve. So churn is, is a pretty crude metric, but it tells you, it tells you something informational about specifically SaaS businesses. Businesses where the customers have signed up to pay every single month in order to stop paying, they need to specifically cancel. So churn is the cancellation rate per month or per period of time that they've signed up for. That could also be per year. So in this case, what we would say is you have new customer signups, churned, which are cancellations, and then total recurring. So you'd say seven people signed up, one churned, let's say from a prior month, and you have six recurring subscription customers. Then 14 people signed up that are new, zero churned, and so total you have the prior month total recurring customers plus your new 14 customers. And then in month three, you have 20 recurring, you add 21 new, and then three churn. And you have 38 total recurring at the end of the month. So what percent of your customers canceled? Well, it's 15% of the prior month's recurring customers because the customers that sign up in this month, the 21 customers, um, they aren't the customers that are churning. They just signed up. So the denominator of the churn is really the prior month total. So in this month, you'd say, okay, two out of the prior month's 38 customers churned, and now our total recurring 72. In this, you'd say, okay, six of the 72 churned. That's 8%. Um, and so you see your churn rate is kind of bouncing around, but overall, your churn rate is 8%. So you can say, in any given month, roughly 8% of our customers churn. And so that tells you, you know, there's some benchmarks around churn, sort of more than 10% isn't great for a B2C company. Okay, so now let's talk about cohorts. And cohorts are the better metric to think about any revenue-based business, including SaaS, because they don't just look at sort of cancellations, which we would call revenue contraction. They also look at um, increased purchasing for SaaS businesses, which is revenue expansion. And then for all other types of businesses, it, it shows you a really clean view of how customers buy over time. And so this is the best to really use for, for any non-user-based business. So how does a customer cohort work? So what it shows is groups of customers based on the initial per purchase month. So this group of customers bought for the first time in January 2022. And what this cohort is showing revenue per customer over their lifetime. So we're saying that a certain group of customers bought for the first time in June 2022, excuse me, June 2022, and they spent on average $102 of revenue per customer. By month two, they spent some more, maybe some of them disappeared, maybe some of them spent twice, three times as much, but, but on average, they spent now 189, that's their cumulative lifetime revenue. By month three, 212, and all the way to 309. And it could be that by this time, it's a smaller group of the original customers, but on average, it's 309. You divide the total revenue by the initial purchase group. And that number in the denominator doesn't change. So we're saying that on average, each customer by month six, we expect to spend about $309, even though in the first month they buy with us, they only spend $102. So the same with the July cohort. So what's month two of the July cohort? This is July. They spend 120 21. What is month two? Well, July, August. So this is in August. So August is actually here. This is the first month of the August cohort, second month, the July cohort, third month, the June cohort. So September is, is diagonally. And so this is a way to look at how do customers continuously spend over time. Doesn't matter if it's SaaS, the churn rate doesn't really matter. Um, it shows you how much do people actually spend and it strips out a lot of the noise. So why does this matter? Well, first off, these are great tables for building forecasts off of, and it can help you anticipate your customer retention. So you could say, okay, well, what do we expect, you know, in this would be the December? Well, you can actually look at, okay, how is this number increasing? Maybe we expect this to get to 245, this, this, this. And you can actually forecast very accurately your customer retention using these tables. I do that in a lot of the models. I do it in my marketplace financial model. You can go check that out on my YouTube as well. And so we're saying that in month six, we expect a customer to spend 309 cumulatively. What if our gross profit margin is 71%? That means that our 
cumulative lifetime gross profit at month six, which is actually our customer, customer lifetime value, we expect to be about $219. That's what we'll make in gross profit off them. Well, why does that matter? Because if we expect to make $219 of profit off a customer, well, we know how much we can spend in market to acquire that customer. So we can spend no more than $219. But let's say our, our CAC, which is our average marketing spend to get a new customer, is $115. Well, if in month one you said, well, they only made hundred and you know, we only made $101 of revenue off them in their first month, we can't spend $115 in marketing to acquire that customer. But if you can see that by month six, they were spending $309 and $219 of that is profit well then you can easily spend $115 in marketing to acquire them because you're still gonna make $100 of profit after recovering your CAC. And so that's the power of cohorts. They tell you a lot about your payback cycles and um, your marketing costs.